Howdy, howdy. Hello. And welcome to But It Was Aliens, the paranormal comedy podcast where we probe paranormal events to determine for the questionable benefit of humanity whether these events really were paranormal. My name is Mr. Kevin and alongside me is Mr. Granville Moonwalker. Today, for our 200th episode, would you believe, whoop, whoop, we have a treat. We will be covering the life story of a gentleman named Robert. Robert has been through it all. Car accidents, job loss, divorce, but many, and I do mean many, believe the cause of these woes to be of paranormal origin. Let us head back 119 or so years to the start of this tale. I was trying to think then of the surname of Robert in Fight Club. That was it. We get to beat the shit out of. My name is Robert. Is it Paulson? It's Meatloaf. <laughs> I want to say Robert Palmer, but I just don't know. I was thinking Robert Poultry, but that's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we begin today in Florida. 1904. Olden times. Not really olden times, but olden times. The world was a different place. It was older. This was the year that fax machines, ice cream cones and x-ray machines were invented, which is really helpful when you need to fax a doctor's surgery because you think you've got an ice cream stuck up your ass, Granville. Indeed. However, I was also wrong. It was younger. (laughs) <laughs> Robert Eugene Otto was a Key West, Florida resident and later an artist. Some may even say that Robert, nicknamed Gene by his family, Gene be- Kelly, became eccentric. As a child, on Robert's birthday of 1904, Robert, aka Gene, was given a special gift by his granddad. A very special gift. For Otto, double senior, had been to Germany and during his 1904 travels had come across the perfect gift. A doll. But not just any doll. This was a doll unlike any available for purchase at the time. The doll was big and stuffed with straw. Robert named the doll, as many kids would do, after himself. Robert the Doll. That is right. Robert Otto became attached to this doll. Really attached. Now, to avoid confusion, moving forward, I'm going to refer to Robert Eugene Otto as Gene. Gene would take this freaking doll everywhere with him, which, okay, many children may do, but the really unusual thing was how Jean spoke to this doll. I bet they were having conversations. But it's going to be one of those things like you expect children to have conversations with dolls, but then you listen to the conversation and it's much more sinister and adult-like than you expect it to be. Like, oh, shall we go and have a little tea party? No, I'm not serving human ears. (laughs) That kind of shit. No, we can't have blood instead of tea. <laughs> what do you mean put glass in mummy's bed? I don't want to cut my finger. <laughs> I don't know what it would take like if I drank the blood after I cut my finger. <laughs> Those conversations. <laughs> I suppose it's better than a lump of coal. For, for a birthday gift. Mm. Granddad loved his boy. Or a wooden spoon. Spoon. Did you get a wooden spoon for your birthday? No, but it's 1904. <laughs> Might have been a good gift in 1904. All it's the better good, to eat that not, ice cream with. It's not a good gift now, so uh, better than getting a wooden spoon. Spoon. People who knew Jean as a child have commented on Jean and Robert having an unhealthy relationship. Jean brought Robert everywhere with him and spoke to Robert constantly. 
Jean spoke about Robert as if Robert were alive, and even at times as if Robert was speaking through Jean. For example, Make us some goddamn Cheerios, mummy! We're hungry! Robert sometimes replied in a different voice. Make us some goddamn Cheerios, mom. A deep voice. We're hungry. A real deep voice. <laughs> it's like the Cookie Monster and the Count had a child. <laughs> cookie. One cookie. When things started happening around the house, for example, a bin was knocked over or dirty little footprints would appear on the floor, Daddy Otto, aka Otto Senior, and Mrs Otto would blame Jean. Jean, though, was adamant that it wasn't him. Who was it? You guessed it. Robert the doll. This doll was getting blamed for everything, everything. The toilet is blocked. Robert did it. Someone ate all the Frosties. Robert did it. Someone spent the Otto inheritance on Milky Ways. Robert T. Doll. Now, I'm surprised that for being such a snitch, Gene didn't have <laughs> stitches. <laughs> He is snitching Left on right his center. boy Robert at every opportunity. He don't want that ass whooping from Mr. Otto. He's not taking accountability for any of this shit. Do you reckon he told Robert he'd grass? Or he was like, I've got your back. And then he goes, wasn't me, Dad, it was Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Proper snitched him. Yeah. Or did he just get fed up with taking the blame for everything? Uh, that's uh, true. Once or twice, he might have had his boys back, but after the 30th time of getting his ass whooped... He's like, for fuck's sake. That's Robert. <laughs> Every damn what? time, Robert. Why is there only one cookie lab? I don't fucking know. Go ask Robert. <laughs> getting so fed up, he's just swearing at his parents now. <laughs> and Robert's like, look, woman, it weren't me. <laughs> Bitch. He, Robert told me it was you. <laughs> Fuck Robert, the lion bastard. Yeah, the, the, the parents are like, well, Robert said it was you actually, son. And Robert's like, Fuck no, I didn't. <laughs> the parent slaps Robert. Uh, sorry, slaps Gene. Gene rather than Robert. <laughs> These strange occurrences continued throughout Robert's childhood. Strange thing was, as the adults gradually started realising more strange things were occurring than you'd expect, even with a little psycho seven-year-old running around. Things would move. There were strange knocks, even when Jean appeared to be sat still. Neighbours even claimed to hear a little voice slowly chuckling. One night, all the furniture in the house was overturned as Robert sat on Jean's bed. Soon, Jean's favourite toys were being ripped apart. All remained generally okay though and Jean grew older, with Robert the doll still by his side. Jean eventually left home to study at the Academy of Fine Arts in Chicago, the Art Students League in New York and the Parisian Sorbonne. When Jean went to university, Jean left the doll behind at the family residence of 534 Eaton Street, which still stands today, known as the Artist House. This place was built around 1887 by Thomas Otto, aka Otto Senior himself, and is today a lovely bed and breakfast, but I digress. The place has some dope TripAdvisor reviews, but I digress. We should probably go there to stay, but I digress. After university, Jean would marry one Annette, a.k.a. Anne Parker, in Gay Paris on May the 3rd, 1930. The couple soon returned to live at 534 Eaton Street. Okay, things are going to take a very, very 
dark, sinister turn now. Are you predicting what happens next or I'm, about what you're about to say? I'm predicting what's going to happen next. Okay. Because Gene left Robert behind. Yeah. Robert going to be pissed. just left him for years. He's been stewing. And then, do you know what? What? He brings back a woman. He brings someone back. A replacement for Robert. Robert doesn't know who this bitch is. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be furious. Robert is going to spit shit. Ooh. He's going to be sat at the tip of that bed with a knife in his hand. I, I wonder if he was so angry that he just sat there in silence, stewing for years on end. Like, just... <laughs> Brewing wait. for 105 yeah. years or something. Contemplating everything that he's going to do to Gene when he gets home. And then all that is just out the window when he walks through that door with a wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to touch your wife. I'm going to fuck up your seed, your firstborn. He is now mine. Or she. His plans have changed. Revenge is in the wind. Hell hath no fury like a rejected doll. We toy story up in this biatch and not in the good way. You heard a Buzz Lightyear, now it's time for Buzz Asshole. <laughs> Although I like to think that the doll was furious that he was left for so long. The moment the, the Gene came home, the doll completely forgot he was angry and all the things he was going to do that were nasty. And his butt just started wagging like a dog. He's like, Master, Master, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he sees the wife. <laughs> Who's this bitch? <laughs> And he stops and the head turns all the way round, face and backwards from his body. <laughs> oh, yes. Puts the knife away that he had, his eye, had it out ready. Just like... <laughs> when Otto Senior passed on, Gene inherited 534 Eaton Street and being an artist, Gene made an art room. This is what led to the property being named the Artist House. Being eccentric... Gene also built a little room full of little furniture for Robert so that Robert was comfy. <laughs> Robert had his own room and lived the good life for a time. A little rocking chair, little bed. <laughs> Gene and his wife, Anne, were well known for their lavish lifestyle and parties. Robert the doll was positioned in an upstairs window passers-by down below would absolutely swear that as they walked past, Robert would move. Now I'm not talking a little drop or even turning around. This doll would move from window to funking window. At night, people even said that they physically saw the silhouette of Robert walking around. Guests at the Otto's parties swear that during conversations, Robert's freaking facial expression would change in accordance with what was being discussed, almost as if this thing was listening and reacting. Then... Mm, yes, I agree. <laughs> then, Robert begun giggling. A doll giggling. You can't get much creepier than this. Now, let me be clear. Robert does not have a sound box. What was Robert laughing at? How was Robert laughing? Ooh. This thing is alive. Now, you said that passers-by would swear mm -hmm. that they saw a silhouette of Robert the Doll moving. Mm -hmm. You just imagine if that was Gene, just holding him by the legs and just moving him around... <laughs> Just to fuck with people outside. Night after night. And we're sat there in the bedroom like, come to bed, Gene. <laughs> Stop playing with your dolls and fuck me. <laughs> Gene's like, no, nah, woman. <laughs> I'm playing with Robert. Walking Robert around the room. <laughs> <laughs> Going to sit him in his little chair. Robert was like, 
you don't play with me, I'm going to slit her throat. <laughs> he's actually saving her, but she thinks that he's just more interested in the doll. Yep. <laughs> it's like he's got to do... It's like community service with a doll. He's got to spend two hours a night with the doll, otherwise his wife dies. <laughs> but you can't tell her that. No. If he tells her that, then he's going to offer. Yep. I think it's time we take a look at this mother trucker. Are you ready, Mr. Moonwalker? I am. Don't look into his eyes. Oh, that is a handsome young boy there. <laughs> Mr. Moonwalker being careful not to insult Robert the Doll. So um, I'm currently showing Mr. Moonwalker a legitimate photo shoot of Robert. Robert is around knee to waist height on most people at three foot four. And yeah, he's, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. And he's dressed in a white sailor suit with a little sailor hat. Robert has cold black eyes and a weathered nub of a face, barely human anymore. Robert has a small half smile. It's like he both does and does not have a face. Robert has his own comfort toy, a small dog with a tongue too big for its mouth and eyes. I don't even know how to describe these eyes. Dark, you lit cold. Oh, you on about the dog or Robert? The dog, they're oh. dark, cold, piercing, yet equally astonished. The sailor suit Robert wears hadn't come with the doll. It was worn by Jean himself as a child. I'm not clear on if the small dog was also made by Jean or whether Robert adopted it. I'm trying to make out what his ear is made of. So it's just it, fabric and uh, stuffed with straw. I was going to say, it looks like it was attached afterwards rather than made as part of the head. It's almost like a like... Jason hockey mask type face, isn't it? That's been sort of stitched over him. Mm. Yeah, I get what you mean. But yeah, I love the thought. This thing is three foot four and this little child's carrying it around everywhere, proper struggling to get it everywhere. Yeah. But <laughs> he can't leave it because Robert will kick off. The picture on the right. So the where? full body shot of Robert yeah. with his dog on his lap. Look at his facial expression. Do you reckon that's how he looked at Jean when he walked through the door? He's literally sat there like that and Jean walks in and is like, who this bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to uh, keep referring to her as a bitch, but it's not you. It's, it's just, Robert. It's just context. It's just, just how just Robert talks. <laughs> Robert is like Robert Ghetto. <laughs> He's a little white doll in a sailor suit, and he talks Ghetto. <laughs> that does look menacing. Mm-hmm. Imagine waking up to just see this thing sat on the edge of your bed looking at you. No, thank you. Nope. Nope. Not a three foot bloody four. I yeah, expected we say, it to be much smaller. Yeah, we say little. It's actually bloody massive. Like a little child. What What I wonder, he's got loads of little nicks and scratches all over him. Now, is that just wear and tear? Or is that where rather than being scratched on him is that something trying to make its way out of him wear and tear mm. Gene wasn't strong enough to carry him around all, all the time <laughs> whacked his head on everything there was a Robert's few like, shit <laughs> <laughs> pick me up damn it <laughs> wonder what conversations they had all sorts of dark and twisted stuff in 1974 Gene passed away before Gene passed, it's said that he spent an increasing amount of time talking with Robert in the attic. Anne didn't care much for the doll, probably jealous that Robert went everywhere with Gene. And so Anne put Robert in a chest in the attic when she had him to herself. I should probably add that Anne reportedly could not stand this thing, used to drive her mad. Anne passed on two years later in 1976 and I can't verify Anne's cause of death. Myrtle Ruta purchased the now vacant house and owned it for 20 years. Fresh blood. The artist house remained the site of many strange activities. Paranormal activity, one could say. It's said that during these 20 years, 
Robert would occasionally appear, but when Myrtle went back to do something with Robert, Robert was gone, only to then appear somewhere else days, months, or even years later. Visitors to Myrtle would hear little footsteps all around the attic and occasionally a little giggle. <laughs> if anyone ever spoke ill of the previous owner of the house in Robert's presence, Robert's face dropped. It has been alleged that Myrtle's approximately 10-year-old daughter begun dreaming of Robert and one night awoke to Robert on top of her, not in a weird way, well, yes, it was weird, but not like that, in a, I'm gonna F you up, but I have sausage fingers, so I can't clasp your throat, kind of way. And then they became best friends. <laughs> in 1994, the house was sold to the current owners, and at this time, Robert the Doll was discovered and donated to the Key West Art and Historical Society. Robert would make his way to the Martello Gallery Key West Art and Historical Museum. Some accounts do suggest Myrtle actually moved out after six years rather than 20, took Robert with her, then she donated Robert to the museum herself before passing away two years later. Do you think that he is trying to make his way back home. Like, he is pissed he has been taken away from... Germany. The house. Oh, the house. Yeah. Like, he's probably just locked in a case now, in a museum. <laughs> and it's like prison. He can't get out. Yeah, and people are going to visit him and taking photos and shit, and they think that he's going to do something nasty when he just wants a hitch to ride home mm -hmm. so he can do some nasty stuff in the house <laughs> nasty stuff in terms of like it's his domain run around the kitchen without washing his feet move things when people put them down going back to Robert the Doll's origins it is claimed that a young girl of Bahamas descent originally gave the doll to Robert Eugene Otto's grandfather in Germany, with some further suggesting that it was in retaliation for a wrongdoing. Who do you voodoo, bitch? Others claim that the person who gave the doll to Jean in 1904 wasn't Otto Double Senior at all, but was one of the family's servants, giving the doll in revenge for being made to serve a rude little twat. The claim, therefore, is that Robert the Doll already had paranormal voodoo energy within him when he came into Jean's possession. If that's the case, I guess that either Robert took a liking to Jean, or perhaps Robert was slowly claiming Jean's soul as his own, and Jean's death enabled Robert to remain on this earth. Others claim that Jean blaming Robert for all the things Jean did as a naughty child actually triggered a negative paranormal energy or even a revenge demon within Robert. If this is the case, be careful when you're cursing drivers on the road or customers in a shop, folks. You never know where that energy is going. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose a lesson to be learnt from that little paragraph statement mm -hmm. is uh don't take dolls from people <laughs> well the doll yeah yeah especially ones that are stuffed with straw a common voodoo recipe mm -hmm. ingredient Product. easy to dip it in a bit of blood <laughs> yeah what if there's like a horcrux inside that doll in the middle of the straw yeah that's where it's voodoo power comes I from I did actually see some accounts but I couldn't verify those ones so I didn't include it in my research notes but suggesting that the straw was contaminated with life essence it didn't clarify what the life essence was <laughs> that could be any bodily fluid I guess let's not get into our vampire discussion <laughs> but yeah I only included the sources that led back somewhere generally because this thing i don't know if you know is famous as shit there are thousands of accounts of this thing and even to this day modern accounts but we'll get into some of that later or sooner the stife company 
believe that they are responsible for Robert's original creation in the chambers of hell. The company was tracked down by the museum Robert made his way to, and the Stife Company believes that Robert was part of a set of dolls created for a window display of clowns or jesters. So there are potentially two or three more of these little pricks running around out there somewhere. Robert was never intended to be sold to the general public. That may or may not be because Robert is evil. Robert the Doll has moved with the times and now has his own social media accounts, though I'd be wary of interacting with them if I were you. Robert has inspired a 2015 film called Robert with four sequels. Today, <laughs> Mr. Moonwalker's laughing because I've shown him a picture of one of Robert the Doll's uh, Facebook posts, I believe that one was. He's, uh, Robert's looking for a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, someone's posted, uh, uh, in fact, there's a news article about a female doll with a demonic voice and Robert has essentially retweeted it saying, if anyone's looking for a last minute birthday gift for me, look no further. Robert wants to get him some. <laughs> Today, Robert remains in the East Martello Museum with Robert protected via humidity control and UV filtering glass and viewers protected by a powerful screen from the dark influence of Robert. Museum goers must obey particular rules in visiting Robert. The rules include the following. You must greet and introduce yourself to Robert. If you want to take a photo of Robert, you must ask first. And... You can't leave the museum without saying goodbye. Yes, museum goers are able to take photos of Robert, but, dear listeners, should you be one such museum goer, please, please remember to ask Robert's permission before you take a photo. If you're rude and assume, even the protective barrier cannot prevent Robert's pure rage from getting to you and Robert's energy will accompany you until revenge has been taken. The protective screen was donated by a fan of Robert's. It definitely wasn't made by Robert himself to enhance his power. To this day, the museum receives reports of evil from those who have been in Robert's presence. Robert receives up to three letters from fans every single day, usually apologies and requests for forgiveness after failing to respect Robert and experiencing misfortune. Those impolite guests have been victim to the road traffic incidents, unforeseen divorce, job loss, accidents, injury and general misery we mentioned at the top of the episode. Polite guests leave Robert sweeties, money, and sometimes drugs. Sometimes Robert writes back to children. Okay, so just like with Gene, mm -hmm. all these bad things are happening and everyone's blaming Robert. Yep. Why is no one taking accountability for their own fuck-ups? Blaming everything on uh, bad juju from the doll. Because it is the doll. The doll's what? energy has grown and grown with every bit of blame. What if he's not evil? He's just unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, everyone around him just unfortunately has bad luck. He's not evil. He just wants to be everyone's See, friend. But yeah. I, I actually did kind of think that as I was researching this one. Because all he really did, he walked around with dirty feet. Okay, that's an accident. He walked around and made noise accident really didn't mean to disturb anyone he giggled at conversations or giggled when he was having fun that's not really evil is it i've not seen him slap anyone i've not seen him put a knife to anyone's throat I've not seen him burn anybody i mean there, there could be context behind the 10 year old girl waking up with him on top of her about to choke her she might have been choking she have, in her sleep she might have had a spider on her and he was going to get it off mm -hmm. might have been an evil snake there Robert is a victim of bad press, essentially. Mm -hmm. Before we conclude, can we explain these events through other means? 
There are thousands of comments on the internet about the impact on people who have seen Robert, and we can trace back the owners of Robert the Doll as well as the artist house, so we can be fairly certain that there is a level of truth to this tale. Researcher David Sloan has uncovered many accounts, family photos and journals from the early and mid-1900s. We know that Robert was made around the time suggested. What is more difficult to track down is direct witness accounts from the early 1900s. But those who have seen, or in fact who have heard the footsteps and seen Robert move more recently do include a plumber and Solaris Hill reporter Malcolm Ross. YouTube is full of videos of people explaining their modern experiences. In the 1970s, after Anne became unwell and put the house on the market, insisting that the trunk in the attic never be opened, teacher Malcolm Ross went to look at the room, by which time Robert was out with his little furniture and directly saw Robert's expression change as the legend was explained to Malcolm. The museum walls today are decorated with letters from the cursed. I'll read one as an example now. Sorry I did not ask out loud to take your photo. Since then, my husband's lost his diamond out of his ring, I tore my rotator cuff, and my daughter's wedding was cancelled. All happened before I returned home. Please stop the curse, I am truly sorry, plus my life is hard enough. Robert's tale is pretty freaky, and just look at the little guy. He is a freaky dicky looking mother trucker. People may already be a bit fearful in visiting Robert, and with Robert in your mind, it's easy to start attributing bad shit in your life to him. But remember, bad shit happens to everybody, it really does, it's just life. That being said, some people do claim to have seen this doll tilt its head when they've asked for permission to take a photo. There's no way everyone who has experienced this stuff is bullshitting, though it is possible that some are and that some have added details. It's even possible that some of the origin story has been exaggerated. But can we rule out so many hundreds of experiences after having contact with Robert? Something came to my mind as you read mm -hmm. beautifully that letter mm -hmm. from the very beginning Robert was blamed for all the stuff going on in the house yeah furniture being turned upside down things being broken noises dirty footprints yep Robert has been blamed for um, silhouettes moving around the house all of that stuff yep and uh, put him in a trunk didn't want the trunk opened uh, mm -hmm. for any reason whatsoever yep People from the museum have blamed Robert for bad things happening to them for not asking permission before taking a photo. Correct. So, all this blame has gone to Robert. Yes. You mentioned earlier about negative energy and where it goes. Yeah. What if he is a pool of negative energy because everybody just keeps blaming him? Absolutely. So, all That's... this negative energy has to go somewhere. It's so, it's not a case of yeah. him cursing anyone people are just adding to like, the adding to the negative energy and then because they're so close that negative energy is yeah. rubbing off on them he's just and a container leave, for people's yeah. shit yep he's a shit container <laughs> and every person who goes around it is adding to it and then being impacted by it yep. essentially being a victim to their own negative energy robert is just an innocent vessel Robert just wants to bring joy to the world. Humans have tainted him. That is the lot for today. So in summary, we've covered the popular tale of Robert the Doll. A freaky little jester doll who was given to Robert Eugene Otto in Florida during 1904. Gene took Robert the Doll everywhere with him. And over time, strange things started happening at the family home. Things would move. Robert would move. Jean began talking about Robert in the first person. Eventually, Jean got older, but Jean was said to maintain an unhealthy relationship with Robert. 
Jean left Robert behind when he went to uni, though, and got married before returning to the family home where Jean was happily reunited with Robert. Strange goings on continued as party goers at the Otto residence reported hearing a small giggle from the doll and reported seeing the silhouette of the doll moving around upstairs at night. Eventually, Jean and his wife passed away. The new homeowner inherited Robert and Robert begun disappearing for days, weeks and months at a time before reappearing as if nothing happened. The homeowner's daughter allegedly even reported Robert climbing onto her at night, truthfully. After 20 years, they sold the house up and Robert made his way into the Martello Gallery Key West Art and Historical Museum around 1996, where Robert remains to this day, protected behind a big screen. Or is it us being protected? Museum goers to this day report bad juju if they snap a photo of Robert without his consent and are forced to write to Robert and apologise, lest they too be victim to job loss, divorce, injury and road traffic accident, as have other museum goers before them. Robert is legitimately considered the most haunted doll in the world today. That is today's probe. Mr Moonwalker... Do you wish to go back over anything? Did... Oh, I suppose we have no kind of proof or anything. I just wondered if anything occurred before the doll was given to Jean. No, all we know is the most likely... Obviously, we've got the company of sand. They made it and it came from Germany. Mm-hmm. And it ended up in Robert's possession so I think the most likely origin is that it came from Germany the granddad did get it for Robert rather than it was given by a servant to the family Jean was always known as being eccentric certainly yep did he get on with other children around that time were there there family there isn't much out there about Jean Um, I've seen a photo of Jean in fact, I've put a few photos at the very end of this episode after with all the research notes, just for your own reference. There's a photo of Jean with another child, but I don't know whether that's a sibling, couldn't actually find that information, or whether that was a friend. But Jean is in the sailor suit that later Robert wears. Because I'm just wondering if he was a lonely child. No one wanted to play with him, he didn't have any friends. Um, Possibly, or maybe because he was taking that doll around everywhere, everyone didn't want to play with him. Maybe that's the reason he got the doll, because people didn't want to play with him. And maybe, then, maybe. You know how kids are, and families at the time, they make up rumours about other families and kids just because they don't understand what's going on. And mm. this is how the curse of Robert the doll has come to pass. The curse of a lonely child yeah. is basically what you're saying. What started it? interesting alternative idea do you know I um, had a look at this obviously he's got his own social media accounts and there's a website there's even a store and you can buy replicas it costs about $2,500 give or take for a full sized replica or about $30 or so for a small replica Mm. I looked at buying one for you (laughs) just for shits and giggles £100 shipping they've so, cracked onto a market here haven't they <laughs> it doesn't cost that much if you're in America but because it's but, coming from in fact it might have even been Canada I can't remember either no I think it was America but either way if I ever go that way <laughs> <laughs> I might have to detour to their warehouse people just want to be part of something yeah so yeah. a lot of these stories I think are just people wanting to say that they were a part of it. And or there are so many videos like on happened. YouTube and whatnot of people saying, I went to see the doll today, this happened, that happened. The, you notice in the photos I showed you earlier on of the doll, there were loads of letters behind him. Mm-hmm. They're actual letters that people have written asking for forgiveness from Robert after they've visited. That's the thing. I think they just want, oh, if you look here, my letters on there, all of that stuff. They just want their 15 minutes of fame or... Whatever it is, they just want to be attached to something. Hmm. So, on that note, the most 
haunted slash cursed doll in the world, are you saying that it was Spookies? No. Oh! Shitting over one of the most famous objects in history. I don't think it's Spookies. I think it's humans not being able to take accountability for things that they have done or just not being able to able to accept things that have happened mm-hmm. and want to put the blame somewhere else basically um, humans are just shit an external locus of control if you get what I mean mm. okay well this one it's probably up there with my favourites I think I'm not even sure we can call this one Spookies because we don't actually know if it was Voodoo, Spookies a cursed doll, a demon or what the hell else Robert himself as we kind of reflected on earlier doesn't actually seem that bad it's just bad luck he just really, wa- oh, he, in terms of what he does he just walks around a bit and he likes a giggle, sure he may diddle people's spouses resulting in divorce but Robert isn't out there chuckying with knives as we said I did read one account suggesting Robert killed an owner of the artist's house before the current owners through carbon monoxide poisoning, but the little chap seems cheerful. I mean, that could have just been carbon monoxide poisoning, but, you know, we've got to blame it on something else. Yeah, I mean... uh, what I I absolutely love the fact that Robert's caretaker and museum creator, uh, Corrie Convertito, I believe, allegedly, writes back to children who send nice letters and... Robert does allow Convertito to get on with her job, but why wouldn't he? She takes care of him. If she ever tries to quit, though. Where'd that bitch go? (laughs) (laughs) She better wash my feet, woman. Uh, I, too, am not saying that it was Spookies, unfortunately. I'd love to, but... And, And like I say, there's so, so, so much out there. Possibly as much as on almost any case we've ever covered Mm. and so so many written accounts video accounts and whatnot but there's no actual video proof that i could find of robert moving or talking that's legitimate so it's hard to say that it's real and i think i think some people do believe it but i think people attribute bad shit in life to something else rather than as a result of their own actions or just because that's how life goes sometimes. People need a reason for things. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that's a wrap for today, unless there's anything else you want to add, Mr. Moonwalker, before we close. Quite like the fact that throughout this episode, I've been very, how should I say, on, very much on board. I've not called bullshit. I've not done anything like that. I've just find, tried to find logical reasons for everything. See, I think we often are more of that manner when we cover non-alien cases because we haven't heard it all. Whereas in the alien true. ones, we've often heard similar accounts sort of 50 times. So the, the, the more paranormal ones are more mixed up and we get caught up in the story and just enjoy it more. We've been charred with negativity from our previous probes. <laughs> Lucky there ain't a doll around here. <laughs> uh, I, I'm so going to try and buy a cursed doll and do a cursed doll episode for your birthday. That might happen now. <laughs> it's going to be a remote done episode. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're saying Robert isn't real? What's there to fear, my friend? What's there to fear? Robert might not be. <laughs> <laughs> but others... <laughs> I've just remembered I've actually got another cursed doll episode coming up down the line. Completely forgot that one was in place. But we'll get there when we get there. But that definitely isn't suitable for your birthday. Who do you voodoo? (laughs) Right. Well, thank you one and all for listening to Buddy Brazilians. We legitimately only realised about two days ago that at this point we'll have made... 200 episodes that is mad to think about we've been doing this shit for a long time son Mm. that just flies (laughs) Christ's sake and we haven't grown up at all (laughs) 
if you enjoy what we do, you can hear more from us, you know. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash but it was aliens. And there, if you were to become a patron of the show, you'd gain access to the side probes. Each month, you see, we release bonus episodes into disturbingly paranormal events to disturbing for the general public you can gain access to these episodes for quite literally less than a cup of coffee you can share episode suggestions with us on the x twitter at but it was aliens you could also say howdy howdy on facebook where connected to but it was aliens is a secretly public private group available to all and known to none called extraterrestrial towers Being a member of Extraterrestrial Towers grants you protection from aliens when they invade, and we absolutely won't take all your belongings and money and pawn it in your underwear for protein money. Don't really know what I just said there. Neither do I. (laughs) I think I meant pawn in your underwear. (laughs) We're going to pawn your money in your underwear. And one more thing before we go, Mr. Moonwalker. Come May 2024, I'm going to be a daddy. What? Yeah, son. You're going to be Uncle Moonwalker once more. What? Yeah. That's happening. What a fucking time to drop that. <laughs> <laughs> On episode 200. Completely unplanned. Obviously it's unplanned. You can't line those things up. <laughs> I'm, I'm stunned. Congratulations. Cheers, sir. But still, I'm stunned. I don't know if you're having me on. <laughs> I'm not having you on. Legit. I'm, I'm God, now showing God Mr. Moon Walker the evidence. Well, I don't really see the evidence, but... <laughs> damn, son! <laughs> That's a mini-me. <laughs> My puppy's gonna be jealous. Yeah. So that's it for this episode. So until <laughs> next time, if Kermit the Frog put his own hand up his own butt, would Kermit gain sentience? The truth is up there. Hash tag. Probe. I'm too stunned to even uh, say probe. I thought you were uh, going to throw in a Twitter comment, but you missed it. I had a plan for that, but it's now just. <laughs> <laughs> I've de Twittered yeah. you. <laughs> On the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Toodle pip. Hashtag probe. <laughs>